Okay guys, today I'm going to be doing a very special video. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, get Ultima Underworld working, the first one, in Unity um, using the Underworld exporter uh, provided by Hank Morgan here at GitHub. So this is just a clearly a passion project of his. He's provided all of the documentation and uh, all of the files that you're going to need for free. Now, getting it working in the GOG version, which is the one that I assume most people are going to be working with, is a little bit tricky if you don't have any experience doing it or if you don't understand um, how the files are supposed to be organized for uh, Ultima Underworld. So I think that would be most of us. So I'm just going to show you how to do that today. So the link in the description should take you here to Hank Morgan's GitHub page for the Underworld exporter. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here, and I just want to make sure we are recording. Okay, we are recording. Okay, we're just going to scroll down here. Here's all the documentation and the things that you need to know. Don't worry about this. I'm going to be walking you through all of this. Technically, the exporter supports Ultima Underworld 1, Ultima World Underworld, the original demo version, which I haven't checked out, Ultima Underworld 2, uh, System Shock 1, and Terra Nova Strike Force Centauri. Uh, after playing this on the re-release on GOG, I was very, or no, Steam, I think I put it on Steam. I was pretty interested in this, um, but uh, some caveats here, uh, as it says here, Ultima Underworld 1 is fully supported and can be completed from start to finish. Saved games are both forward and backward compatible with the original DOS version. That's actually going to be very important here because, I mean... A huge shout out to Hank Morgan for actually putting this up, but this is not entirely true. You will possibly run into some bugs. Again, this is a guy that ported this into Unity all on his own. So bug testing, you know, the, the amount of volume of data he's going to need to do significant bug testing to iron out all the bugs is I just don't think he has access to it. So I think for all intents and purposes, this is true, but just keep in mind that there are a lot of caveats to this. But let's get into this. I, I'm not, you know, the demo is not supported. Um, we're not going to worry about that. Ultima Underworld 2 is partially supported with fuller support to come in time, although this was going on three years ago. Um, this was December 2nd, so more like two years ago, but December 2nd, 2018 is when he last updated this. I will tell you that um, in a previous... Uh, release on the list he says that saving is not supported in Ultima Underworld 2. There is a workaround for saving but it's incredibly complex and it's just not worth it in my opinion. So this doesn't really work. You can run it but you basically can't save the game and there are some inventory glitches and other things. System Shock 1 you can have the map viewer mode. I haven't played with this but essentially it's not really that supported. And then, of course, same thing for Terra Nova. So basically, this is only going to work for Ultima Underworld 1. And I'll shut up and get into it. I do apologize for all that. So we're going to scroll down here. I just wanted to point that out in case people were like, oh, I can import System Shock. And it can... Nope, nope, nope. Uh, no. None of it's going to work. You can walk around in Ultima Underworld 2. And I think you can load music files. So anyways, we don't need the source code. Uh, either of these, the TAR uh, GZ... Those are called tar balls, right? Or the zip file, and we don't need the dev. I think this is the dev tools in case you want to work on it yourself. We just need this. And while we're here too, um, once we install this and we look at the readme, let's go up to the readme here actually, the installation. So, same executable is used for all game. Download the zip file and extract it to any location you wish. In the extracted folder, open the config ini file. And what we're going to do is just edit the paths to tell the config where we have our actual game data. Because again, the exporter basically exports the game data and runs it in Unity. I don't know the specifics, but that's essentially what it does. So you still have to have your original game data. Thus, we have to either tell the exporter where certain data files are or move them to a new place and then still tell them. The same is true for the music. Um, so uh, you'll get a splash screen, a GUI splash screen that will allow you to select which game you want the exporter to run. And here we go, soundtrack. Uh, but that'll be part of the, that actually there's more information in the config files, but there's the Sound Blaster MIDI and actually the PS1 release of the soundtrack as well. So if you want to add soundtrack to the game, because I don't think it comes loaded with any sound files or it uses the DOS supported ones, which I think are just MIDI, 
or might even be worse, what you're actually going to need to do is scroll down here, even further down the page. I don't think it's, it, no, it might be this one. Yeah, here we go. So look for the Narvi Night Eyes release, that's 1.07, and all the way down, and make sure that you, like you said, when you see it like this, it's going to just say Asset 6, you need to click that down menu, and grab this zip file as well, musicpacks.zip. Okay, now that we've got that going, what we're going to do is go ahead and, sorry about that, what we're going to go ahead and do is open up some folders on our computer. So we're going to go to uh, C, right? And so right into C, just to make it easy to path to, and also I have heard people say that it does not support long path formats. So if there's, I don't know, six or seven or eight or nine different folders in the path length, you're, it's, it may not work, so it's just easier to do this way. We're doing, we're going to do a couple of things. What we're going to do is we're going to make a, a new folder called UWE. We're going to make another new folder called UW1. Actually, you know what? To make it easier for you guys, we're just going to do small case UW1. Okay. And then in games, we're going to go to, there's a, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this, but I think the easiest is to do it like this. So actually, you know what, we're going to go ahead and delete this and we're going to go into games and make something called UW1 instead. Sorry if there's any confusion guys. So we are not making it in just plain C. We're making it in C games and there's a very good reason for that. Lowercase UW and then the number one. And we'll be making another folder but we need the exact folder first. So first thing we're going to do over here is we're going to open this zip file and we're going to extract it to right the folder that we've just made. So the folder that we just made, this is the exporter software. So we're going to go to C and we're going to just click UWE. So that UWE folder we just made, we want to extract all the things from this zip file, which is the Windows X64 version 1.09 zip. That's what we're extracting there, okay? So here we go. Now if you remember when it said how to set up, we're going to go to UWE, it said the next thing we need to do is go into the config file. So we're going to go into the config file, and here we go. Uh, Point to the folder containing the original game executable. Note, if using the GOG version of the game, you have to ex get, extract the game.gog to a new folder and point to that instead. It's not quite as easy as that. There is an issue with that, so that's what we're going to be doing. But the reason that we set the path to C games UW1 instead of C UW1 is that I want to make it as at least confusing and as least the least amount of confusion and the least amount of editing of this config is possible. So basically, we already have our UW1 folder set up. So now what are we going to do? Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is, since we have this folder already set up and the Underworld exporter is already directed to this folder to launch the game, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our actual... installation folder for Ultima Underworld, the GOG version, which reminds me, I have to go ahead and install it. I forgot. So let's go ahead and install it. Because uh, I, I just ran through this to make sure I had everything working, so I did delete all the folders and files associated with it. So we're just going to give that a second to install. It shouldn't see it's going pretty fast. I don't remember how big it is, but it's not very big, yeah. All right, so now that that's happening, what we're going to do is we're actually going to navigate to the install directory. So it's actually in Program Files x86, GOG Galaxy. If you have Galaxy installed, it might be in GOG Games. So that you are going to have to know where your GOG Games install. I have the Galaxy installed because one of the things I like is, um, for example, if I go to Owned Games, it has everything I own between Steam, even my Xbox. Look, if you go to OS and Consoles, look, Xbox One shows all of my Xbox One stuff. So it's actually very cool for you to just keep track of everything that you own, but that's neither here nor there right now. I'm just telling you guys why I use it. I know some people hate it. So we're going to go to our GOG folder, GOG Galaxy or GOG Games, 
And there we go, Ultima Underworld. Now, this is this is a packaged file, and what you need to do is extract this. That's what he's saying, but there are some caveats. This is a very important folder that has to do with the uh, the operation of the game, the Underarm 1. Now, you don't actually need the DOSBox stuff because DOSBox is essentially doing what... Well, DOSBox is an emulator for uh, Windows DOS for this to run because that's the OS that it was designed for. So you don't need the DOSBox stuff, so none of this DOSBox Ultima. The G, this is just a GOG icon. You don't need anything related to GOG. You don't need the launch um, shortcut support. You might move the manual if you want to, and you don't even need any of this uninstall information as far as I know. All you need to do is extract this. This is where the game data actually is, except for in this underarm file, because this is where it saves. So if you forget to move this, you're going to be in trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our GOG dot, or game.gog file, and we're going to go ahead and I use 7-zip, so we're going to extract files, right? And it's going to make a separate directory, game slash. We're going to go ahead and delete that. We don't want an additional directory because then we're going to have to change the path even more. And then extract two, we don't want it extracting there either. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to... Uh, we just put it in... Oh, yeah, that's right. So C, local disk C, games. And here we go, UW1. Okay, so that's what it's extracting, and just go ahead and press OK. Now we're just going to make sure that worked, so we're going to go over to our UWE, and go back, and now we're in C, let's go to Games, UW1, and this should now be populated. So what we did was that this is all the stuff included in that uh, game.gog file. So it's in a package, and the Underworld exporter can't read the package, because that it's just a it's a package with the extension GOG. GOG knows how to read it and send that information to DOSBox. Underworld Exporter needs the original game data, which is all of this stuff. All right? But we're not done yet. So the other thing we have to do is go back to our Ultima Underworld install and we're going to grab this underarm folder and we're just going to go ahead and copy it. And the other thing that's nice is this preserves your GOG installation. So if you want to run the original DOSBox version, you can go to this, and there are reasons you may want to do that, but we'll get into. So this doesn't actually mess with anything in your installation. You're just copying all the, the data files over. So we're going to go back to our UW1, remember, local disk games UW1, and we're just going to paste that underarm one folder in here. Now, this still won't run, okay? So the next thing that we have to do because this is a lot of this data is universal between Underworld 1 and Underworld 2. So some of the more specific game files are going to be here in UW. So we're given the UW2 data in our Ultima Underworld 1 install. And so when the game tries to path to some of the data that it needs to run the game, it's not going to know where to go. So what we have to do is open up this Underworld file, the UW file, grab everything in it, uh, we're gonna cut and paste, but you can copy and paste if you for if you mess this up and you want to individually delete all the stuff in the previous folder. So let's copy it because UW is not gonna read this folder. It doesn't know what this is. It's not going to be. Uh, uh, it doesn't have this path coded into it, so it's not gonna read that. So it's okay to just leave it. So we're just gonna paste it all in here. There we go. Now everything should work. So. Our Ultima Underworld 1 installation is done, and we're going to go ahead and go back to our Underworld Exporter config file. So this is right here. It should still be open, but I'm going to close it just to show you guys where, how to get to it. So we go back to our C drive, UWE, and then our config file right here. Okay. So now, point to the folder containing the original game executable. We have done all that. We extracted our game.gog file. We moved under ROM1. And then, because that game.gog file has a separate subfolder in it called UW for just Underworld 1 assets and data, we moved that out of that folder into just the UW1 folder. Now, all of the data that, you, that the Underworld exporter needs to read is in our C Games UW1 folder. 
So that's already done. We don't actually have to change the path here. So now when we launch Underworld Exporter, all of that stuff's going to be there. So now we have mouse look options. Um, these are the mouse sensitivity. I found it to be a little bit high when I launched, but I'm not going to mess with these. So if it's high, you just got to open up your config file again and change them. I don't know, 10, 12, 7, whatever you want if it's too much. If you need special controls, because the game comes with a manual, but some of the controls had been remapped based on the new uh, user interface and new control options. So, for example, toggle mouse look. The game now supports mouse look in full 3D. Um, if you want to toggle it back and forth, that's going to be the E key. Toggle full screen is going to be F, um, which actually that's pretty cool. We can actually take away the UI elements if you want a, a larger screen. I'll show you how to do that. And these, you'll as you play the game, you'll learn what these do. So you know you can't just double click on something and expect something to happen. Like you don't have your weapon out all the time, for example. So if you want to attack something, you have to be in attack mode. So interaction attack will put you in attack mode. But you can also do that with a mouse click from the UI. Um, cast spell that's very important. So I'll show you how to guys use guys how to use that. But in case you're curious about some of the the changes to the control scheme, they're going to be in here. Graphics. Um, oh, this is the light level, so default light level equals 8. If it's if it looks too uh, dark for you, you can change this, and of course you can change the field of view. And here's what I'm talking about with music. So, uh, currently we don't have any music set up for the game, and we don't have any music files installed yet. So, just like with here, where we have to set the path, or at least direct it to the path where the stuff is installed, we're going to need a path for music files for it to grab when it launches the game. So this is the atmospheric sound stuff. He hasn't put any of that in. We have cheat mode if you want to put on infinite mana or god mode, um, anything like this. So you can, you know, kind of look at what's going on here and, and change any of these settings, but we're not going to mess with that. So for Ultima Underworld 1, the current path for the soundtrack data is C games UW sound pack slash the name of the file. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I would say the Sound Blaster 16 and the Roland are two very good soundtracks. I don't remember if the MIDI is better or worse. Um, so, oh, actually, no, that's just the uh, Roland for Underworld 2. So don't worry about that. We just have access to MIDI, Sound Blaster, and PSX. I can't remember which one was better. Uh, I seem to remember that maybe MIDI was better, but I can't really remember. But I think the PlayStation version of the soundtrack is great, but it doesn't really matter, and I'll show you why. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the name of this folder in the path, UW Sound Pack. We're going to go ahead and copy this. We're going to go back to uh, UWE, go back here. So just make sure you go back to C, C Disk, Games or whatever your local disk is, I don't know, it's usually C, so C, games, where UW1 is, but instead of UW1, we're going to make a new folder, a uh, new folder, and we're going to name it UW Sound Pack. Now this part is just slightly tricky, so what we're going to do, this is where the config file is going to read this, the music files from, the soundtrack files. So we're going to open up musicpacks.zip, right? Now, if we extract like this right now, it's going to, I believe, the way I did it to get it to work is instead of extracting all of this, because it may open up all of these folders in the next file, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up one and we're gonna highlight the zip file itself the whole zip file and if you know more about how these you know uh, just how the directories work coming out of zips you may not need to do this but just follow what I do don't select the individual folders select the entire zip file musicpacks.zip extract to and we're just gonna do C games UW sound pack okay go ahead and press OK and it's done. So now we can close our zip software. Uh, I think that's WinZip I'm using. Yeah. Okay, so now we go to games and we go UW Soundpack and now we have all of the sound packs here. And the beauty of this is that 
the path in the config file is already set up for whatever. So since we have all of those, oh, that's, is this is the right one? No. Oh, let's minimize that. Okay. It is currently set up. This is the path that is in the config file right now. UW sound uh, bank equals C games, UW sound pack, UW1 SB16. That is the Sound Blaster 16 soundtrack. So if you launch the game right now, you will have a soundtrack. But all you have to do in the config file, if you want to change which soundtrack because they're all currently installed, is just go here, delete this part of the path, which is the, just the folder of the soundtrack you want. So we're going to go ahead and delete. I don't know why I right clicked on it. Sorry, guys. Oish. I have computer skills. What I don't have is fine motor skills. All right, so now I like the PlayStation soundtrack, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this because that's the name of the folder in the pack we just um, uh, moved to that folder, and I'm going to paste it. And now we're going to get the PlayStation. But if you wanted MIDI, you'd just do the same thing. Delete the place, the name of the PlayStation folder and put it in. And it's all right here. One last very important thing. Whenever you're done with the config file, go ahead and save. If you really want to be paranoid, I wouldn't recommend this, but you can save as read only. Um, you would actually just go to your UWE folder. So now we're in uh, UW Sound Pack. Now it's directed to the PlayStation. So we're going to go back out to C drive, excuse me, C drive, okay, and now go to UWE, if you really, really wanted to, you could set this to read only, uh, go to properties, and then, oh, it is read only, weird, uh, so that changes the game from, re or, uh, or uh, the old Underworld exporter from changing anything that you've done in here, but just always make sure you save after you've made changes. Uh, the game itself shouldn't change anything. Like I said, if you don't like the cast spell button being Q, you can change that. If you're used to the new System Shock mouse look layout that, that uses Tab, which is the same in System Shock 2 actually, so if you like System Shock Enhanced Edition, Edition, you can change Toggle Mouse Look to Tab if you like. It's all up to you. So, now that this is saved, I'm just going to confirm again, and I'm just going to confirm all our paths. All right, games, UW1, we made that folder. Everything else looks good. And uh, we are using, for Ultima Underworld 1, we are using the PlayStation 1 soundtrack. That's on the Japanese version. So now that we have all of that done, as I said, guys, the trickiest parts were just pathing to your music folder, making sure your path to the correct installation folder, but the trickiest part that I think most people run into, a lot of people are probably rolling their eyes at me, like, yeah, this is super easy, we just didn't understand this one part. I only figured this out through trial and error, is just how to configure this so that it runs. Like I said, if you unpack, first of all, you need to new move under ROM1, you need to make sure you've extracted your game.gog in its entirety into here, and then unpack uh, UW into here. But we've already been through that, and that's all done. So now we're going to go back to UWE, and we're going to go to Underworld Exporter. And this is what it's going to look like. Keep in mind, guys, this freaked me out. Okay, so this is a very, this is another caveat, guys, that you got to keep in mind. For some reason right now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, the, the previous computer I was running this on was, was my only computer that I could use for anything, was a laptop that had a 1680 by 1050 resolution. And when this popped up, I was convinced that it was reading the resolution of the laptop. But I had an HDMI cable coming out of my laptop, and my main, di I didn't even have, wasn't even using the laptop's top display. The main display was the one I'm using now, which is 1080, 1080p. And I could not get it to change to 1080p. I was convinced that it was detecting the laptop display and would not let me change. It wasn't until I went back through ex extensive <laughs> looking through all the documentation for uh, the exporter that it says that right now currently the resolution is locked to 1680 by 1050 so do not be um, dismayed do not think that you're having any issues with the graphics or the input or display detection this is the max resolution currently supported by the exporter um, okay so graphics quality fantastic okay let's go ahead and play this is the splash GUI for the exporter. And see, you're gonna to wanna to see this. UW1 found at C Games UW1, right? It didn't find this, it didn't find this, it didn't find this because we didn't, we don't have anything else installed that the exporter can access. So we just click on this, and that's a good sign. 
and we do have the soundtrack playing. I hope you guys can hear that. It's not very loud. So we're gonna go, we're gonna skip the intro. Uh, we're gonna create character, male, right-handed, druid, that's fine. Actually, that's not a bad roll. Dexterity's pretty low. Uh, oh, that's a really good roll. <laughs> if I was planning on playing the game again right now, I might actually go with this. Um, I can't remember what I like to do. Lore, track, I'll probably do search, I guess. And does it really matter? I'll just do this guy. Ah, I should have done the ginger, whatever. I wish they had a go back. Um, sometimes there's stuff you can't get rid of here, like the development build and stuff like that. Of course, just choose easy. Arbitrary name. Keep the character, yes. You guys may understand why I really like the... Uh... Oh, you know what? That's why. Okay. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear the uh, the output now. Or at least I can hear it better. It's coming through the mic. Actually, I actually have to turn it down. It's too loud. I hope you guys can hear me over this. Let's just make sure that you can. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit more. Make sure that you guys can hear me over this because I've got some tips and tricks. Okay. So as you can see, there's full mouse look. Um, they took all the textures, popped them into Unity, uh, everything's re-rendered. Uh, a little bit higher texture quality too. As we said, if you want to go full screen like System Shock, there you go. It still doesn't get rid of all the UI because you need quite a bit of the UI, but you can see more now. Uh, and then if you need to pick stuff up, you just press E and then you get the free, uh, free mouse cursor. So let's go ahead and put this here. Okay. You guys will get used to the controls. It is typically left click to move stuff. Or no, it's right click to move stuff and then left click to use stuff. I won't eat the apple right now in case I need it. So, see, you got a full mouse look and you're using the PlayStation 1 soundtrack, which is uh, much better sounding than most of the other ones. Turn it down some more. So, like, if I want to pick these up, I can just highlight them with the screen and then right click and it'll actually change. You know, so, like I said, the UI was changed to make it easier. In the original version, you have to go over here and say, oh, I want to grab stuff, or I want to look at stuff, or I want to fight stuff. But for some of the actions that you'll be using more frequently, this game just streamlines them. So if you see something, even if you're not in pickup mode, let's say you're in, in like unlock or look at mode, it'll just, it doesn't matter, right? So for example, I'm pretty sure if I just go like this. Oh no, that's, that's bullshit, Never mind. Sorry, guys. No, that's bullshit. I didn't remember every uh, nuance of, of how this version of the game works. Okay, so broken stuff. Another thing is, yeah, so I believe in the original DOS version or the original version, you would have to be in look to get any of this information and go like this. Whereas in this version, you can be in grab and it will just highlight, I believe, on the bottom of your screen, like what you're looking at. But I could be wrong about that too, so don't take anything I... Take everything I have to say with a grain of salt. Another thing you might notice, if you left click on stuff, he might, your character might drop it. Um, there is an issue where sometimes the game will register a single click as a double click, depending on how long you hold it down. And so that you're basically telling the game, I want to pick it up and then drop it immediately. So um, sometimes you will have to hold left click or right click instead of uh, just tap it. I'm gonna put that there. Um, like I said earlier, you know, when you want to change the interactions, F1 through F4, so that's the settings menu, F1, return to game. F2 is if I want to talk to things. F3 is to pick stuff up. Uh, F4 is to look at stuff. This is important like this, like I can, and it'll tell me at the bottom of the screen here, right here. It'll say, you see a rough hewn wall. Okay, rough hewn wall. Rough hewn wall, dirt floor, pile of debris. So if you want to know what stuff is without interacting with it or picking it up, you can just click on it. So that's what that's for. And it actually helps sometimes. Like you look, go over here. What is this? A pull chain. And then if I say, well, okay, what if I want to grab it? Oh, that's another thing, guys. So in the, sorry, in the original version, I'm going to close this actually. In the original version, if you did this, if you right clicked on it, when I have grab interaction selected, it wouldn't do anything. I would have to go to this, which is the open or interact. 
and click it like that. But this game will automatically do it for you. Let's see if we do it in uh, look mode. No, it won't. How about in fight mode? No, that'll just... But at least it... Because grab mode is the one you're going to be in kind of most of the time in the game. So it helps with that. And then if you're good with the F keys, you can just be like, Oh, there's a monster. Okay. F... Oh, no, I'm terrible. There we go. So now I'm in fighting mode. Which I'm actually going to need here. Can I open this and fight? No, I can't. So I'm going to do F2. No, F3. And then F5. Now I'm in fight mode. And there should be a mouse in here. Yeah. Another issue with this game. I just noticed an issue. another issue right there. Um, another issue with this game, as you can see, is that a lot of times the AI, their pathing is totally screwed up. Instead of having like randomized pathing, they seem to aggregate in corners like this. They just walk straight into the wall like this mouse is doing right now. There's not a lot of way around it. If you aggro him though, like this, um, I'm just going to grab this. See, now he's aggroed. Now he will actually come after me. Oh shit, I got to get out of here. I gotta equip a weapon. I mean, I don't have any armor, so he may actually, he could actually kill me, potentially. I've also noticed that the enemies have more HP on this version. I killed this guy in one swing on the DOS version earlier, so. Oh, no, gotta go into grab mode. So you'll get used to it. You're just, now I'm in grab mode. See, see what I'm saying? I left clicked on it, or right clicked on it, and he just keeps dropping it. So I will have to click and hold. And then, same thing here. Oh no, that worked. That worked okay. That, and there we go. Did it again. See, I'm, I'm just clicking once, but if I click and hold, so that's a bug. I'm pretty sure. The DOS version does it occasionally too, so it might be a, a long-standing bug. Um, I also have the search skill enable. Let's see if there's a secret door around here. I'm going to see if the... I'm just trying to show you guys some of the things of how the game works. I don't want to go through there just yet. Oh yeah, so it says left click, and I'll show you that. Okay, I'll show you that in a second, guys. Alright, so what we're going to do... Typically, what you have to do to open a locked door with a key is this. So we're going to get our key first. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. If I'm in key mode, like here, I can still right click on this and pick it up. So sometimes, like, you know, you'll be in key mode or, or uh, pick up mode. And I think even talk mode lets you pick up objects, which the original game did not. So some UI improvements, some control improvements to just save you some time. So typically what you had to do, this key is for that door, right? In the original version of the game, if I came up here and I right clicked on the door, see the key? Oh, damn it. Never mind. So what would happen is if I do that, it would say it wouldn't unlock the door. And it would also say like, no, you have to be in this mode. So I'd actually have to go to key interaction mode, find the key in my inventory in this backpack, right click it, then click the door, and then it would open. They have bypassed all that, or he has bypassed all that in this. You just double click. So you just, there you go. And you saw all I did was click on it once and it said unlocked. And then from there on out, you can just open it, which is actually going to come in handy here. So let's go ahead and and see how it switches us back just because it's like, oh, you want to use stuff? Just switch back. You couldn't do that in the original and it got a little tedious sometimes. Sorry, I'm just picking up stuff here, guys. I really wish I had played with this on my, uh, well, I wanted to go for, like, a purist playthrough, but this is a much better soundtrack than the Sound Blaster. I mean, the same, the same notes and everything, it's just better instrumentation. So, like, this guy, he's not supposed to, he's actually supposed to be kind of around here, sometimes here in the DOS version, but he just gets stuck on this wall. Another thing that somebody pointed out, so, we're gonna talk to him. And I'm just going to say, merely exploring the abyss. 
Okay, so if you get stuck there on more, in the original version you could click on that and it would it would actually advance, and that's another bug, the cursor gets stuck on stuff here. So you could click more and um, it would give you the rest of the conversation. The problem is, is it doesn't load to the bottom of the screen. So it's, it's like, in the abyss for how long? Thou must blank. So I don't know what the rest, the rest of the sentence he's trying to say. So that's a bug. Um, but if you keep pressing, so if you see the more thing, press space, that will continue. And then you can press the number keys for your response. So um, indeed, I would be eager to, eager to learn of the area. And then he gives me some exposition. Um, what inhabitants are there? How didst thou escape? Tell me of thy people. You can also, I think, highlight them. Yeah, see? But just use the number keys, I think it's easier. Perhaps I will set out for this area. Okay, so the dialogue's over, and I got stuck like this too. I was like, well, game's broken, I can't finish it. Just press space again. So anytime this screen gets caught, when it says more or whatever, just press space, and there you go, you're out. And I believe jump is space, which is way better than the original game. So it controls like a normal first-person shooter. WASD. I did... Oh. Deselected it. That seems like a bug, possibly. There we go. Oh, no, he's not dead. Yeah, see, they have way more HP. I was wondering why the combat was... Combat can be pretty difficult in the, the Unity version. So, they obviously think this asset was totally redone by uh, Unity, because it doesn't look much like... I mean, it is a 3D rendered object in the original, but it doesn't look much like that. It's got some weird shading going on. Hey, 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 pick stuff up. Do what it... Oh, yeah, I'm in fight mode. You gotta get used to that. It is kind of annoying... I would love to see uh, Night Dive. See how it switches to key? So there, it just saves you so many clicks and so many moving through the menus. Like, because you have to be in key mode to uh, switch, flip the switch, which is annoying. Can't be in grab mode. Wait, I don't want that open. There's a fucking bat over there. Never mind. Please close. There we go. Hope the bat didn't come in here. Oh, damn it. Close the door. The open door is locked. Okay, well. Oh yeah, there's a sort of mantling in this game. So if you jump, you can actually go over the ledges. But you do get sort of stuck on the floor. Ah, damn it. See what I'm saying? Like, this thing should be dead by now. It's a friggin' rat. Okay, let's go ahead and... Like I said, guys, I think the mouse sensitivity is a little high. So, were I you, I might actually switch it to... Oh, yeah, I can put multiple things in the bags. So, you don't have to worry about, like, oh, I filled up my inventory. Where did my stuff go? Let's go ahead and... Oh, this is your rune bag. Always make sure you put all your runes in your bag. Uh, if you want to read stuff, uh, you actually go to this. Then you click on it, and then you can read it right here. Go into the abyss knowing that I will not... Uh, forget thee, as better as the Baron's justice doth seem, tis better than a hangman noose. No matter the hang, hangman's noose. Yeah, I was like, well, I'm pretty sure you don't say hangman noose. No matter the passing of the years, I will await thy return. Yours forever, Sandra. Okay, so, sorry, just make sure you do this. And if you need to, uh, let's say you want this out of your backpack, you actually put it to the open bag again, and then it'll be out in your normal inventory. Just make sure all your runes are there. I'm going to put in my rune bag up here. Um, you can learn some spells from the manual. I highly suggest opening the manual up when you play. There's the river. See, I was in... I No. Yeah. Put these here. Oil flasks. So, you, I believe you can sort of play the game. No, you can't. I was about to say, you can play the game in the original control scheme. No, you kind of need mouse look in this one. Alright, so I have the key, like I said. Typically what I'd have to do, go in here, click on this, right click this, then click on the door again. I don't have to do any of that since I already... Now if it's locked and you don't have the key, it's not going to do anything. 
but since I have the key, see it switches me automatically over to that use function and then just opens the door for me. Like I said, everybody likes to go into the corners in the Unity version. So it doesn't really, it's not that big of a deal though because, and sometimes they're where they need to be. It's not that big of a deal though because, um, Any enemies that you're going to fight are just going to aggro, and that will fix their pathing. In other words, they'll come straight for you. Um, and these people are just people you need to talk to, and they won't leave their little areas either. They have, I think they have like a set space they're supposed to be in, so you can actually finish the game like that. Now. Okay. Uh, is there anything else we need to look at in here? Oh yeah, these are bed rolls. You're gonna need them. You can sleep in the game and stuff. But I'll let the manual tell you about all that stuff. I'm just trying to show you the pitfalls of the game. This is a bit annoying, and I think there's a way to fix it. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and save my game, and over save slot one. Yes, game save. Now here we go. Now we get this warning, and if you watch my playthrough, you'll see this file not found. C games UW1 save. So, uh, save for slash desk check your paths now here's the thing the first time you save I'm pretty sure it creates that path for you right so um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and quit the game Okay guys, I'm sorry if there was a skip in the video there. I'm gonna have to edit something out. I forgot, I had Microsoft Flight inst Simulator installing for like days, cause it's like, or a day, it's like 150 gigs, so. Um, sorry about that. And if you heard that conflicting uh, soundtrack, I'm sorry about that. So, what we're gonna do, well, the issue we were having was it was giving us that little um, uh, bug about the save saying that we didn't have the path installed. So we're gonna go back to games, UW1, and here we go. See, save one is installed now. So if you want to get rid of that uh, that warning forever, here's what you do. You could do one thing. I think you can go to under on one and move all of this stuff out. That's one way to do it. Um, so yeah, we may have needed to unpack under on one. But another way that you can do it is just do like this. Just go to UWE. Going to reopen it. And we are also going to test that the save functionality is actually working. And now the soundtrack should, should sound okay. Alright, so we're going to go to Journey Onward. Here we go, Outcast. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and save over every single save slot in the game. And that's actually making the save folders as we do this. All right, so it's still gonna say that, so we're gonna go ahead and exit again. And now we're gonna run it, or actually no, we're gonna quit. We're gonna go back to our, nope, that's the wrong one. So we're just gonna check our UW1 in our games folder again. There we go, save one, two, three, four, and we should be okay. So I think if you want, you can unpack that uh, under ROM that may have been a mistake I made, but it's, as you saw, it's not super crucial. We can still get the game running. So we're going to go back to UWE, play, Unity, oh, there we go. All right, so we're back here. Now let's go ahead and try saving again and see if that error pops up. Let's save in over four, see? So now it's gone. It just didn't have those folders, but the game is more than happy to create them for you. So that's one way to get rid of those. And you also know where your save folders are now too, which is very, very important. So, let's see, what were some of the other bugs I was gonna walk you through? Oh, I would say anytime you've successfully loaded a save, go ahead and alt tab out. So let's say you've been playing for a couple hours, you come back and you successfully load a save. Go ahead and create a new folder on your desk block, like save block one, 
or save first playthrough or something like that and then go to your games and just copy all of these folders into that block and so every time you load a successful like you, you've done like a four hour play session you saved you came back and it loaded correctly go ahead and save those save states so you have to move all of these folders into a new file a new folder on your desktop every time when I finished my playthrough I was cluttered with maybe 10 different folders full of save one through four here's the reason you can easily corrupt your save files in the game easily and there's really no way to know how or when or why so don't be super discouraged if you lose some progress um, there is things like god mode too if you just want to keep the game running the whole time you just go in god mode just so you can play the game there's a lot of stuff you can do so um, another thing that I would like to point out there are one or two puzzles in the game that just absolutely cannot be finished um, in the current unity build so I'll give you a great example this is a cauldron. You need it to cook stuff. If I go here and I move this apple out, I should be able to put the apple in the cauldron. Or maybe I'm thinking, no, it's a bottle, I think? Well, okay, you'll get to a point in the game where you're going to need to fill up a cauldron to make a special potion, right? You need to fill it with several ingredients. The problem is that the object capacity of the cauldron is bugged and it will not fit. I think you have to mix wine and like rotworm and something else. You can put the rotworm in, you can put anything else in, you cannot put the wine in. And it makes absolutely no sense. So if we try it with the key let's see um so it the game does not work the way it's supposed to oh damn it we'll use uh this oh, you know what we'll do oh ate that by accident gonna move these out left click to swap slash combine okay so it's probably a different cauldron or it only accepts certain ingredients but so the the rotworm will fit in everything i think there's some other stuff you have to put in some different mushrooms and stuff it'll all fit in but the wine bottle won't fit in for some reason even though it will in the retail version so what you can do is you can actually this is crazy because it says the saves are compatible with the retail version what you can do is if you get to a point where you're stuck you can just make sure you save and then alt tab out copy these saves go to your original uh, GOG Ultima Underworld folder and it's in underarm remember that underarm and remember one of the reasons it was important that we didn't mess this up we didn't cut and we didn't extract the the game.gog in here is it messes with the file structure and then you can't watch launch the gog version and if you're moving stuff out that it's it needs to run so this version is still completely intact and it will launch perfectly from gog so you go to underarm and you go ahead and replace all of these right just replace all of these then when you open up um uh, when you launch the game in GOG, actually, I'm going to show you that, guys, right now. So we're going to go ahead and exit this, actually. So I don't know why I'm telling you when I can show you. Uh, so what we're going to do, go back here. Actually, this will be easier. Uh, yeah, under on one, we're going to go ahead and delete these. So we're going to grab our save files from here. Copy them. G 
GOG Galaxy, Games, Ultimate Underworld, Underarm 1. That's where it keeps the save data. Go ahead and paste them. And now I'm going to go over to GOG Galaxy. Sorry, we're going to go install. There we go. Ultimate Underworld 1. And just give it a second. I'll play. Come on. There we go. DOS box. I'm just going to set it up real quick. Uh, game DOS settings. Drive C. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Nope. Uh, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to mess with it. So this is the, I believe the original MIDI files. I think this, I think, I, yeah, the Sound Blaster 16 are the better ones. So if I go Journey onward, all my saves are here. Wasn't this right where we were? It was actually, that's exactly where we were. We have our torch, we have a rune bag, we have everything, got all our stuff. Let's go see if we moved the cauldron. See, they're actually supposed to walk around. They're not supposed to get stuck in the corners. Although this guy looks like he's getting close. Um, so, if you need to finish that puzzle with the cauldron, see how we move the cauldron and the box and everything like that? It's all right here still, so. So as you can see, the soundtrack on the other one is much better. You can change this one to Sound Blaster, but I like the PlayStation one myself, which you can't, you could probably mod it to load it in here, but um, it doesn't natively support it, I think right now. So there we go. Um, so you can load your saves into here. So exactly what, what I did then was I, uh, for that specific puzzle, you load in here, you combine everything in the cauldron, you make the thing that you need to, you save again, and then you import that save over into your Unity version. There's also a door that is supposed to open with a certain combination uh, of symbols or something like that in the game. I'm going to go ahead and exit. So there's a door that is supposed to um, open with a certain set of uh, symbols in the game. And uh, it just doesn't open on the Unity version. So again, what you would do is drop into the uh, DOSBox version, open the door with the correct combination, um, go through, make sure it's open, and then save again, and then load your game, and then everything will be where it's supposed to be. So that's how you do it. So those are the tips I have for getting the game running. Um, I'm going to have to go back through and do some stuff to edit this uh, video real quick. But uh, ultimately, that's how you do it, guys. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you can change soundtracks here. You can change whatever. Um, you can try and get Ultima Underworld 2. So basically, the way that I figured out that you can save in Ultima Underworld 2 is the issue is that if you save you can save in the game, but everything in your inventory will be deleted, right? But the game world state will be saved. So the way to save in Ultima Underworld 2 Unity is you have to carry around a chest with you at all times. And anytime you want to save, put all of your gear in the one chest. Everything you own in the one chest. Drop the chest on the floor next to you. Save, right? Then what you do is, because that save will not load either, right? It gets corrupted immediately. But here's the weird thing. It will load in the DOSBox version, the GOG version. So you save, right? Uh, you now have a, at least for the Unity exporter, it's a corrupted save that won't load. So you have a useless save for Unity. You port that save over to the GOG version, launch it, It'll open up, it'll launch the game exactly where you are, take everything out of the chest, equip it on your person, put the chest back in your inventory, the empty chest, then save again over the spot that you just saved. So you're now saving over the save that you loaded from. Then you import that save 
into the Unity Ultima Underworld 2 and it will load. I didn't feel like doing that every time I needed to save a game. You know, that's too much. Um, your best bet, honestly, is to maybe try and put God Mode on and speedrun it if you just want to see what the game has to offer and play with some of the mechanics just to get to the end. Although, again, you know, like I said, there are there are certain things, you know, like you have to make that troll uh, a special wine or whatever in Ultima Underworld 1. That's broken in this version. Um, and and the door's broken. So it, And this is the one that's supposed to be the most tested, the most reliable. So if Ultima Underworld 1 has that many issues, I can only imagine how many issues um, Ultima Underworld uh, 2 has. So there may be, you know, entire uh, scripted sequences that just don't even work in Ultima Underworld 2. So the only fully playable one right now and the only one that you can save in is Ultima Underworld 1. But if you really want to try and play with Ultima Underworld 2, the, um, the, pro the procedure for getting that to run is exactly the same. The only thing that you're going to do is obviously everything coming from your Ultima Underworld 2 installation. And then when you get to that point, where you need to go to, um, where you need to unpack, let's go back here, no, no, yeah, this one, when you get to the point where you need to unpack UW, you just unpack UW2 instead, so that's how you do it, guys, um, that's how you, uh, Install Ultima Underworld and get it to run with the Unity Exporter. I will tell you, except for a few bugs, and you'll know when you run into them. And again, you can always comment on my channel and ask me, is this a real bug? Is it not? Um, you know, it is basically playable. There is a bug again towards the end of the Oh, the final boss. So the final boss, spoilers, 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 spoilers. You don't really fight him in his arena. What you do is you get... I don't know, six or seven magical artifacts from throughout the game, and you throw them into this pit of lava, and then when they all get destroyed, it opens up this portal to, like, the netherworld, and you just have to run away from him without getting killed. It's actually quite easy in the Unity version because navigation's pretty easy. Um, it's a little harder on the, the original version. But um, in the Unity version, it's pretty easy. The problem is when you throw the stuff into the fire, it doesn't... When you throw the stuff into the fire, it doesn't... Um, get destroyed, and so you don't trigger the ending, okay? So that's the problem with uh, the ending of the game. God, guys, I'm so distracted, like a million things going off around me, you know, trying to keep the recording going. Um, so uh, what you have to do, again, once again, is save while you're in the final room, load it into the... Uh, DOSBox version of the game, throw all this stuff in, save real quick, import that save. Once you trigger it, you save real quick and you import that save into um, Unity and then you can play to the end of the game in Unity and do the, it's just, you run through these, you just run through this maze. I, I don't even think you can like, there's no wrong turns or anything. As long as you just keep running and you don't fall off the edge or you don't stop, you'll finish the game. So um, yeah. Those are the only bugs I can remember for sure. There are definitely some other ones. I think, for example, the um, there's a boss, I think, that you have to fight. He's, like, he's really the final boss of the game, and uh, to get to his lair, you have to go through this maze that's, like, unnavigable, and so you have to get this special crown that allows you to see the path. There's a bug where the path is already laid out, whether you have the crown or not, so that's, you know, that's one problem right there. There's little bugs like that, um, but by and large, the game works the way it's supposed to. All the dialogue works the way it's supposed to. Um, and if you just follow the things that I've showed you right here, you should be fine. And again, I say again, guys, this uh, Unity exporter has a really, really, really nasty habit of randomly corrupting your saves. You'll try and load something, and it'll just freeze, or it'll tell you that doesn't exist, or whatever. Uh, and there's literally nothing you can do, because it goes into these folders right here. And it just destroys like all of the, like player.dat. So you can't even try and edit these files to fix it. As far as I know, it's just totally screwed up. Um, the corruption happens pretty much instantaneously. And here's another thing too. It will corrupt all of your saves because sometimes these are, have some dependencies on each other. Like I think they, they have dependencies like on world state or something like that. It may not, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn here or whatever, but, um, 
here's the, what, what I mean by that is there, there's clearly some dependency on each other because if one save gets corrupted, they all get corrupted. You know, um, the corruption can be minor sometimes, where it's just like you load without like I don't know eighty percent of your inventory, which is kind of a big problem because finishing the game requires you to still have stuff in your inventory from you know like quests that you do. Uh, so that can be a problem. Un and but usually what I found was that they just wouldn't load. I had to replay the first third of the game actually because my all of my saves got corrupted. So. Like I said, every time you get a successful load after saving and you're able to sex successfully load it, either alt-tab out or quit the game and then just immediately copy those save files. Just like I said, make a, make a folder on your desktop and just call it like... Just call it... Uh, uh, just like playthrough part one or whatever and then just save it and then just copy these into it you know just highlight these and then just copy and paste them into it um, and then these will still be remain but at least you'll have that saved state so if you play another three hours and then you corrupt all your saves you don't have to start from the beginning you can just open this up um, make sure you delete everything in here right uh, you have to delete all of the save data Right, you have to get rid of all of these because if you try and um, let's say you just like just one is corrupted and you try and put it through, it could become re-corrupted from the others. So you have to get rid of all of them, delete them, and then put this back. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. It happened to me twice. Um, I don't really know. I, I couldn't find anything reproducible I did that would have triggered it. So it only happened twice. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. I'm sorry if this video ran a little long, guys. I didn't really intend for it to. I tried to keep on topic for the most part. But again, uh, somebody requested this video and I just want to run you through all the different problems you can have while installing this game or running it and the things you might run into. So, But if you do everything I showed you and you keep certain things in mind, you shouldn't have a problem. You may need a walkthrough too for certain areas. If you get really, really stuck, I would consult a walkthrough because it could be a bug or it could be the game. You know, um, I mean, it could just be like that's how the game was designed and you haven't figured out the puzzle yet, or it could be a bug. So just make sure you figure out if something is a bug or you just didn't figure out the puzzle right before you start messing with, you know, deleting your saves or, or uh, you know, because... Because, I mean, it is kind of a very fragile setup, so you don't want to have to go into the GOG version any uh, more often than you have to, you know. All right, guys, well, that's going to be about it for me. I'm just going to get this edited now. And uh, that should be it. I hope that you guys are enjoying um, or you, you enjoy playing this game in Unity. And I hope you enjoy things like being able to play with the PlayStation soundtrack or the Sound Blaster 16 or whatever. Um, and I don't think this project is abandoned. So hopefully in the future we'll get an, an update to for Underworld 2. Um, I have played the GOG version of Underworld 2. It runs at a slightly higher resolution. It runs with... Uh, a better um, a larger viewing window for the player so you can actually see more of the environment and I think there were a few updates to the control scheme in Underworld 2 that for me again playing this game you get so used to having to do some of the stuff regardless they they updated the control scheme for mouse look but there's still some archaic antiquated ways in which you have to do things in this control scheme so just keep in mind that um, you will have to get used to a sort of cumbersome control scheme. So moving from that into the GOG version of Underworld 2, you're actually more used to how the game should work. And it's not too bad. So um, I will do a Let's Play on my channel of Underworld 2, and I'll actually do the, the DOS box GOG version. I won't be messing with the Unity version. So, um, And this game really preps you for getting in that headspace. So if you want to, and then again, if this is your first foray into Looking Glass Studios games, and you loved this Unity version, this would be a great jumping off point to get into System Shock Enhanced Edition because the control scheme is way better in System Shock Enhanced and there's way less uh, menu clicking and stuff like that. The control scheme and the UI is way better. So you, you'll probably have a lot of fun with that game too. And the graphics look amazing with the new Kex engine. So anyways, I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions um, or you need any help with anything, please just let me know in the comments. Um, I try to stay on top of it and respond. So. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy the game.